Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the muscles of the back. So the muscles of the back are divided into two groups. You have the superficial muscles and the deep muscles. So in this video, I'm going to mainly focus about the deep muscles, but I'll also cover the superficial muscles real quick. So the superficial muscles are divided into three layers. You have the first layers with the trapezius and the latissimus. And then if you remove them, you will see the rhomboideus major and minor, and also the levatus scapula. And then if you remove them again, here I only removed the right side. If you remove them again, you will see the musculus serratus posterior superior and posterior inferior. So now if you remove them again, you will then start seeing the deep muscles of the back. So the deep muscles of the back are also divided into layers. Uh, and the reason why muscles are divided into layers is because when you operate, it's easier to kind of map where you are in the body, see how deep you are and etc. So first off, the first layer of the deep muscles of the back are also called the superficial muscles. Here you have the long muscles and the erector muscles that make you able to stand up straight and also rotate the trunk. And here I've highlighted for you right here. And then the second layer that you have, if after removing the first layer, you have these muscles highlighted. And then the third layer have the innermost muscles closest to the vertebrae. So let's start with the first layer. So the first layer of the deep muscles will start with the long muscles, remember? Long muscles and the uh, erector muscles. So the long muscles are the splenous muscles, mainly responsible for extending the head and the neck and also rotating it to the side. So we'll start with the capitis splenus muscle. This part sits on the head. So this one, let's go ahead and draw the origin insertion point in that. It originates from C3 to T3. So if down here is T3 to 1, here you have C7, 6, 5, 4 and 3. That's the origin point and it serves, I'm going to make it green, it serves at the mastoid process of the skull up here, the mastoid process. And then, uh, so the muscle fibers from the contract, they go this direction, lateral, the, uh, the, uh, it rotates the head and also extends it. So next one is the cervical splenius muscle. I've removed the capitis one, just so you see the insertion point in this muscle. This one originates from T3 to T6. So T3, 4, 5 and 6. So T3 to T6, that's how it originates and it inserts at the transverse process of C1 and C2. So when these muscle contract goes this way and also rotates the neck and extends the neck backwards. So now if you go further with the erector spinal muscles, I've highlighted them for you right here. We'll start with the first one, that's the uh, spinal muscles. So here you see the cervical spinal muscle, and the cervical spinal muscle originates from C6 to T2. So if go ahead and write T2, 1, C, C7, and C6, that's how it originates, and it inserts at C2, 3, and 4. So the transverse process of C2, 3, and 4. And if we go over to the next muscle of the spinal muscles is the thoracic one. The thoracic muscle, spinal muscle, originate from T10 to L3. So L3 to 1 and T12, 11 and 10. That's how it originates. And then it inserts at T1 to 8. So T1 to 8. All right, and when these two muscles contract, the spinal and the cervical one, cervical spinal muscle and the thoracic spinal muscle, they both are in the same group and they both have the same function, which is extending the trunk. All right, so now I go over to the next muscle group, which is the longissimus muscles, highlighted for you right here. The longissimus muscles consist of three parts. You have the, the capitis part, which connects with the head, and the cervical one that connects with the neck, and then the thoracic one that connects with the, the ribs. So we'll start with the capitis one. The capitis one originates from C4 to T4. So let's try it. T4, 3, 2, 1, and C7, 6, 5, 4. That's how it originates. And then it inserts at the mastoid process of the skull, the mastoid process. And when this muscle contracts, it pulls the head backwards and also rotates it to the side, right? 
The next one is the cervical longissimus muscle. And the cervical longissimus muscle originates from T4 to T1. So it originates and then it inserts at the transverse process of the C2 to C5. 3, 4, 5. And when these muscle fibers contract, they extend the neck, pulling it backwards, and also rotates the neck. And here you see I've highlighted the capitis longissimus muscle, so you can see that it lies right next to it. So going over to the thoracic longissimus muscle, which is the big muscle right here. And this muscle originates from the sacrum. You can try to sacrum. Sacrum. And the iliac crest, iliac crest, and also the lumbar vertebrae. Let's go into that lumbar one to five, and it also originates from the T six T twelve, T six till T twelve. All right, and it inserts at the transverse process of T1 to T12. So if we go ahead and do that, T1 all the way down to T12. And it also inserts at the ribs, the second, let's go and do second rib to the 12th rib. All right, to be more exact, it connects, uh, it sits on the, um, at the coastal angle of the ribs. All right, so now we go over to the iliocostal muscles, which is the last muscle group of the first layer. And the iliocostal muscles are also consist of three parts. You have the uh, cervical part and the thoracical part, and also the lumbar part. All right, so now we're going over to the cervical iliocostal muscle. We'll start with that, we'll change color to blue. So this one, it inserts at the sixth upper ribs. So rib six, five, four, three, two, one, the sixth upper rib, ribs, and then inserts at the transverse process of C4 to C6. So C4, five, six. So when these muscle fibers contract, they pull the muscle down and that extends the, the neck and also rotates the neck to the side. So going to the thoracic one, the thoracic one sits on the six lower ribs. So let's go with this 12 rib. This is 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That's how it originates and then inserts at the six upper ribs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So when these muscle fibers contract, they pull the, tra the trunk backwards and also flexes their trunk laterally. Now going over to the lumbar iliocostal muscle and the lumbar iliocostal muscles, go ahead and make it blue to show you the uh, origin points. Uh, this one inserts at the iliac crest right here and also inserts at the fascia tura columbaris. If you remember my other videos, I've talked about this. This one goes like this, it's a fascia goes in and branches around some muscles. So it originates on that also, goes like that. And it inserts at the sixth lower rib. So 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That's how it inserts. And when these muscle pipes contract, they have to pull the trunk downwards or backwards because like, they're on the back. And they also flexes the trunk to the side. All right, so going over to the second layer of muscle. So the, this right here highlighted is the first layer. And if you remove them, you will see the second layer highlighted right here. So we'll start with some muscles called semispinal muscles. The semispinal muscles have all the same functions, which are to extend and rotate according to where they are. So uh, we'll start with the uh, semispinal capitis muscle. The semispinal capitis muscle originates from the C4 to, to T6. So this is T6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and C7, 6, 5, 4. That's how it originates. And then it inserts at the occipital bone, as you see here. And these muscles, as I said, it 
it pulls the head backwards and also rotates the head to the side. Going over to the next muscle I'm going to talk about is the cervical semispinal muscle. And the cervical semispinal muscle, let me make it blue again, the cervical semispinal muscle, it originates from T1 to T6. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and inserts yeah, the transverse process of the um, C2 to C5. So C5, 4, 3, 2. Okay, and they pull the neck backwards and also rotates the neck to the side. Next muscle, the thoracical semispinal muscle. And the thoracical semispinal muscle it originated from T6 to T12. So we'll go ahead. The transverse process from that to T12, 6, 5, T12, 11, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That's how it originates. And it inserts at the spinal process of C6 to T4. So this is C6, 7, and T1, 2, 3, 4. Let's go ahead and do that. And when they contract, they pull the, the trunk backwards and also ro rotates the trunk. So now that we have covered the semispinal muscles, we go over to um, the multifidian muscles. And multifidian muscles high highlighted right here. They are located underneath the semispinal muscles, which we just covered. Uh, so if we remove this, the uh, semispinal muscles, you will see the multifidian muscles right here. And the multifidian muscles are, cons are consist of two parts. You have the long muscles and the short muscles. So the they are they originate and they originate at the transverse process and insert at the spinous process. So if we go ahead and draw the vertebrae, it's easier to explain the. Uh, Origin and insertion. Go ahead and do that. And that's a transverse process, and then we also have the spinous process in the middle. Alright, so let's make it and the long one will be green. So the long one will sit on the transverse process, but this one will jump over one vertebrae and sit on the one above it. So two vertebrae above. That's how it sits. So like that. Right, so that is the long uh, multifidian muscle, and the short one. Let's go ahead and make it yellow. The short one will also originate from the transverse process, but it will sit on the spinous process on the vertebrae above the origin point. That's why it's short. Now you see the difference between short and long muscle. And so that is the multifidian muscles. Go over to the tautal muscles. They are located right underneath the multifidian muscles and they actually originate and, and insert at the same point. So if you go ahead and just going to change color, go ahead and zoom in on that, you will see right here how they originate and insert. They exactly the same, just uh, just on the on the back side of the multifidian muscles. Uh, but here you see that the long ones, the rotatoris longi, originate from the transfer process and search at the spinous process of the one above the uh, of two vertebrae above the origin point. So this is the origin point, this is the vertebrae above and this is the vertebrae above again. So goes like that. Right? And the short one the short one originates from the transverse process again and then inserts at the spinous process of the one above. So this is the transverse process of this vertebrae and this is the spinous process of this vertebrae, as you see. And when these muscle fibers contract, they uh, extend the, tr the trunk and also rotates the trunk to the side. So now that we're done with the muscles of the second layer, we go over to the muscles of the third layer, which is located closest to the vertebrae. And these muscles are, look are highly expressed on the cervical region and the lumbar region. You might find them on the thoracical region, but but not on everybody. They're mostly expressed on the cervical and lumbar region. So let's go over and zoom in on that. You will see that there are two types of muscles. You have the interspinal muscles, located 
between the spinal, spinous processes and the intertransversalia bit located between uh, each uh, transverse process. So how are they originated and inserted? They actually originate on the lower vertebrae here and then insert at the upper vertebrae. Same goes to the transverse area. So when these muscle fibers contract, they go downwards, right? Because they originate from the lower vertebrae and they extend the uh, the region they're uh, in. For example, for instance, and this is the cervical one. So this is, they extend or pulling the neck backwards and the transverse muscles, uh, the unilateral contraction, a lateral flex is the uh, neck. All right, so now going over to the last thing I want to talk about, and that is the muscles under the head. That's the suboccipital muscles. And the suboccipital muscles uh, consist of four muscles, highlighted for you right here. And there are actually two groups of muscles. Well, the one group is the rectus capitis posterior muscles. Another group is the oblique capitis muscles. So they, here you have both minor and major, and superior and inferior. All right, so we'll start with the rectus capitis posterior minor, which is located here. This one originates from the tubercle of the atlas, as you see here, and it inserts at the occipital bone right here. And when these muscle fibers contract, they extend the head, pulling backwards. Now going over to the rectus capitis posterior major, located right here. This muscle originates from the spinous process of the axis and inserts at the occipital bone. And when they contract, let's go ahead like that. When they contract, it extends the head and also it turns the head to the same side that the muscle are the muscle fibers are contracted. So that is the rectus capitis posterior muscles. And go over to oblique capitis muscles. And we'll start with the superior one. The superior one sit on the transverse process of the atlas, as you see here. Let's go ahead and make it blue. Originates from here, the transverse process of the atlas, and inserts at the uh, occipital bone here. And when these muscle fibers contract, they extend the uh, head backwards and also lateral flexes the head. So now the last one is the oblique capitis inferior. And the inferior is located right here, and it inserts at the uh, spinous process of the axis and inserts at the uh, transverse process of the atlas. And when they, these muscle fibers contract, goes like that, they rotate the head on the same side, right? And that was all the muscles I want to cover in this video, and I hope this was helpful.